Hello friends, uh, this is Dr. Dhawan here, your ENT faculty and it is my proud privilege to have Dr. Vineet Gupta sir, our surgery faculty over here. And I am here to really give you the answer from Dr. Vineet's side, from my side of the most controversial question, I would say about the nerve injuries related to thyroid surgery and let me put it across to Vineet sir straight away. So what is in your opinion, which is the most commonly injured nerve in thyroid surgery? Sir. Uh, we would like to make a statement together that, uh, my dear doctors, most common nerve injured in thyroid surgery is the external branch of superior laryngeal nerve. And then if you follow the sequence, the next comes right recurrent laryngeal nerve, then comes left recurrent laryngeal nerve. Yeah. So you would have seen, sir, said that out of RLN, the right is more commonly damaged than the left side. You know, whereas the general notion will say, why not left, sir? You're saying, but in thyroid surgery particularly, as a complication, right side of RLN, sir, as you rightly said, is more, you know, vulnerable to get damaged why, as sir? compared to the left side. Why? Let, let me answer the, the surgical anatomy question over there. That number one reason is, if you see the right RLN, it is actually more superficial in the tracheoesophageal groove. So it's a it's a likely possibility that surgeon, while digging in that place to find out the inferior third artery, might damage this now. Whereas the left one goes pretty deep in the tracheoesophageal groove. Now the second difference is the relation of the inferior thyroid artery and its branches with the main trunk of the right RLN is highly variable. The right RLN may pass over its branches, under its branches or sometimes through its branches also. And lastly, the rare one, there is a possibility of non-recurrent laryngeal nerve on the right side more commonly than the left side. So it means that the anatomy is more variable the nerve is more superficial and that makes the surgeon more, you know, probably damaging the right side as compared to the left side, sir. Wonderful, sir. So, I hope the take-home message is absolutely clear here. And uh, I would like to know, sir, that if suppose uh, we injure this external branch of superior laryngeal, then how the patient is going to come to us and how we are going to manage the situation? Yeah, very practical, clinical, you know, question over there. Now, guys, the golden statement of laryngeal anatomy is all muscles of larynx are innervated by recurrent laryngeal nerve except cricothyroid, which is supplied by external branch of superior laryngeal nerve. Unfortunately, that is the most commonly injured nerve in thyroid surgery. So, guys, you understand, we lose the function of cricothyroid muscle. And this muscle is the main tensor of vocal cord and tensors give us quality of voice. So, as far as the symptom is concerned, the person will be having poor quality of voice, particularly singers will tell you they're not able to touch the higher notes. Examination finding, which is your INICT, FMG, need PG question also, two findings. Number one, bow down vocal cord. The cord will bow down because tensor has gone away. The main tensor has gone away. The bow down vocal cord. And number two, if it is a unilateral damage to the external branch of SLN, then the paralyzed side, anterior commissure, will rotate towards the normal side. And this is called skewed glottis. Wonderful. And uh, that's really good. Uh, and I personally feel that if suppose me and uh, Rajiv Dhawan sir, we are doing this uh, thyroid surgery, if we are doing a total thyroidectomy, then uh, if we are operating on uh, a female, then yeah. we have experienced this together. Absolutely. That we are trying to make an incision yes. as low as possible in the neck for cosmesis. So now if you are making an incision lower down in the neck and then when you have to raise the upper flap, and when we have to dissect the superior pole of the thyroid gland, then at the superior pole, the external branch of superior laryngeal nerve is coming. We are not able to see this pole very clearly. We have to ligate the superior thyroid artery here. So this is the area where we might land up in damaging the external branch of SM. Perfect. Now, sir, I would like to know that if by chance one-sided recurrent laryngeal nerve is getting damaged, then what is going to happen to this patient? Now, the second nerve which can be damaged is of course RLN. As I told, more commonly right side than the left side. Unilateral RLN paralysis is not that big a problem. Let me tell you from the clinical angle because the other side is 
abducting pretty well because uh, Arlen paralysis will bring the vocal cord to the midline. The other cord is abducting well. So patient will have some sort of hoarse voice because one cord is not moving at all. And secondly, on exertion, patient might complain of a bit of dyspnea. Generally, these patients can be managed, you know, conservatively. However, definitive procedure may be required if symptoms are more bothersome. So the problem comes when it is bilateral. For example, you and me are operating a bigger thyroid together. In a case of thyroid malignancy, you cut the right recurrent and I cut the left recurrent. And then it is a disaster. Why? Because both RLN, this one got cut, this one got cut. One, one each, you know, score is equal. Now what will happen is, when RLN has been cut both sides, only one muscle is left. Which one? Again, cricothyroid. Unfortunately, cricothyroid has got additional adductor property also. Adductor means it will bring the both vocal cord permanently in the midline position. This is called bilateral abductor paralysis. Guys, you know that another gold, golden rule of the vocal cord paralysis? We speak with closed vocal cord, but we breathe with open vocal cords. Unfortunately, now this patient has got permanently closed vocal cord because they are paralyzed actually. So, right after extubation, sir, immediate post-operative respiratory difficulty and strider is the main complaint, but actually patient voice is unaffected. You know, patient, because both the cord are in midline forever. So, patient won't be able to breathe, but will be able to speak. So, before dying, he will tell my name and sir's name also. But don't worry, we will not let the patient die. We are there to do tracheostomy immediately. So immediate life-saving tracheostomy right on, on the table after extubation has to be done. So it is highly advisable that we must take the pre-operative consent for tracheostomy in a patient of thyroid surgery for any such eventuality. So my dear doctors, we are really fortunate to have Rajiv Dhawan sir with uh, us inside the operation theatre and uh, definitely as he won't let his patient die you will also not let your patients die. And sir, one last question I want to know that we have done the tracheostomy, we are able to save the life of this patient. If suppose the patient does not recover, then what eventual treatment we yeah. have to do? So, you save the patient. Now, patient would be having tracheostomy. The rule is you should wait for six months. Another question for you guys. It's a vocal cord paralysis due to any reason. We must wait for six months. They can ask you why in the why also. Why? Number one, it may be neuropraxic injury. It may not be neurotomesis. Okay. So this, there is a high power probability there may be recovery total or partial of the vocal cord movement. Let the nature take its own turn first of all and will come into play after six months in case after six months still the cords are in midline it means to act to decannulate the patient of tracheostomy we have to do the definitive treatment of this patient and there are four definite treatment options number one the treatment of choice is type 2 thyroplasty or lateralization of the vocal cord number two is uh, carbon dioxide laser cordectomy which is getting now popular Number three is laser arytenoidectomy, another one. And lastly, Kashima operation. Like, you know what, a lot of people are now switching over to Kashima now. And you know, INICT question, what is Kashima? Kashima is separation of the membranous and cartilaginous part of vocal cord to make the airway patent. So these are the options we have. But treatment of choice will be type 2 thyroplasty in such cases. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. I myself got enlightened with uh, such a wonderful knowledge. And uh, we hope the same that our proud doctors would also be getting benefited by this. Yeah. Hope we are able to help our students. Thank you, sir, for bringing this interesting and very controversial topic and making it so clear. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you, sir. Thank you so much.